my long-term goals are to build a business, inspire people, change lives. If you told any freelancer, hey, you need to do 100 videos this month, where do I even begin? Physically, emotionally, mentally, creatively, you're gonna hit a wall at some point. I'd rather put those limits on myself than I have to go find them. What is the most surreal moment of your career to date? That's a loaded, loaded first question <laughs> there. There's a, there's a few that stand out for sure. Like running indoor drone tours, there's been some big sales numbers and big revenue numbers that Zach and I have hit from an entrepreneurial side that I'm super proud of and very, very proud of from a, like a monument milestone. That would be one that comes to mind. Other milestones and monuments, I would say like shooting NBA Chicago all-star here. I'm a hometown kid. I love the bulls. I love the NBA. So like shooting all-star weekend here for NBA in Chicago was a big one. Um, and then obviously the NFL stuff is huge. Like that's a big milestone. I started by filming sports at my local high school football there. Zach was on the football team. I was filming the football team. So now to be standing on the NFL sidelines, filming Mahomes, Justin Fields, and all those guys, it's definitely a full circle moment where you can put a milestone marker on that. Yeah. I was just talking to somebody about that recently. Whenever I had to tell my story, I was speaking to some high school kids the other day. And one of the things that came to my mind was like, I guess my first routinely making consistent videos was sports videos and it was football videos so now to pretty much be at the top of it it's a pretty surreal thing to sit down at night and think about it's crazy but it's crazy. whenever you talk about idt and you talk about the nfl stuff there are two different sides to your career that i don't necessarily think as many people see the indoor drone tours because the nfl stuff is just more clickable a lot more people are interested sure. in that sure but let's talk more about indoor drone tours and what was the journey to get there yeah that's a great question i mean indoor drone tours is what i do 99 percent of my days and my time and the sports stuff is just you know fun and, and freelance and builds into the agency as well it's great for credibility it's awesome to be shooting that stuff i love doing it i'm a sports junkie um but yeah the evolution of indoor drone tours started kind of five years ago when zach and i quit our corporate job so he was working in radio sales i was working in tv sales and we both missed the creative side of the industry we both knew there was a better way for advertising and social media was obviously on the come up and breaking out. So he quit, pulled me on board, and we started our creative agency. And then Indoor Drone Tours is really when we found a great product that fit a niche and it took off with commercial real estate. Hey, what would you say to somebody? You had you had Dula for a couple years where you were pretty comfortable, but it felt like you almost hit a ceiling and didn't know what you were pushing to the client. If somebody asked you what you do, what your niche is, didn't really have an answer to it. What advice do you give somebody that right now is having some success in freelance, but has made the same amount of money for the past three years and hasn't found their one thing? Yeah, it's it's a perfect answer to that is if you if you haven't found if you've plateaued as a freelancer, you need to find a niche or need to find a value for the business. So whether it's sports, whether it's product photography, whether it's business brand videos, you need to have that consistent revenue driver where your company's known for that. You go to your website and it should be clear that this is what we do, this is how we do it, and we do it better than everybody else. So when we had Dula Creative Shop, awesome social media agency, it's still running today. We just do a lot of our referral business and the clients we've had since day one. But Doula Creative Shop never had a true identity. We kept trying different niches and different products and different things to get to that because we knew that's where you can scale the company and you can hire on an editing team and other creators and full-time employees and create an actual business around it. So I think what you said was pretty much spot on. Like we were, we were grinding through Doula Creative Shop through a few years and we tried a bunch of stuff and we learned a bunch of stuff to figure it out. And that way, when the opportunity came for indoor drone tours, Zach and I were ready to go. Like we're like, hey, this fits perfectly. We know how to run the business and we know how to automate stuff. We know how to get the sales pipeline full. And Zach's really the mastermind behind steering the business right. and then letting me do what I do on the creative side and run that that side of the company. Right. Somebody asked me what I do for a portfolio recently. And I was thinking about advice that you've given me before. And the biggest piece of advice that I could give them was make it the least amount of clicks as possible which I didn't think that much at the time about, but whenever it came to getting the NFL job, when it came to getting some other jobs, I realized that 
The people you're reaching out to are busy. They don't really care about you right now because you haven't been hired yet. So it was the least amount of clicks to show people what you do right away. Yeah. And showing people what you do right away is what IDT did for you. It is pretty much your identity now. So if somebody asks you for work, what do you do? You have an answer. Exactly. And I think that's a big, it's a big moment for you to legitimize yourself and to really be like, okay, deep breath. Now I know what I need to do every day when I wake up. Now I know everything that I know the boxes that I need to check. But when it came to growing indoor drone tours, what were some of those hiccups that you hit because it grew quick and yeah. you had to employ some people and what were some of the problems you ran into? Yeah, it's a really good question. I mean, there's a lot of problems you run into when growing a business, right? And I think the number one thing for me is quality control and being able to crank out high level videos and do a hundred videos a month. If you told any freelancer, Hey, you need to do a hundred videos this month yeah. and they all need to look perfect in the same level that Joey does every single time. You'd be like, where do I even begin? Like I need to teach someone the style of how I edit, the style of how I shoot the intro cards, the graphics I use, all those different things. So to make it happen was a lot, a lot of work on my end on the creative side of like basically taking my brain, dumping it on a piece of paper and saying, here are the 25 steps I use every time I edit a video. And that's how I'm going to teach this next editor. So systemizing the business like that helped it grow. Um, but yeah, problems are any, any problems you would have for a normal business. It was like, the amount of the workload that was coming in. It was how do you keep the quality the same way, sales, customer service, all the usual things. So when it comes when it comes down to it is like, how do we create really high quality videos that serve a great purpose for commercial real estate and have the fastest turnaround time in the industry where people get their videos within 48 hours. And when we started doing that, people started coming back to us over and over. So it wasn't perfect recurring revenue, but we would say, hey, this team is gonna have 20 properties a year and we know they're coming to indoor drone tours with all those properties. And we started seeing those names come back through the sales pipeline over and over. That's when the excitement got started. We say, hey, this guy, Matt, he's come to us every single month yeah. for this building video. So then you don't have a perfect projection of, hey, in October, we're gonna do this amount of revenue, but you know those people are gonna be there. Right. So. Well, you talked about making a list of things that you have to do, and I'm curious about, what, how, how do you approach your days where you know that you have to tell so many people things that they could do better, things that you need them to do that day? You have to communicate with Zach so you guys are on the same page. What What's your approach every day when you wake up so that you make sure that you can both maximize your day and stay mentally sane? Yeah, that's a really good question. We talked about this in our meetings with the employees at the start of 2023. Like, How do you be the most efficient in your day? What are good tips and tricks and mental things you can do to line up to have the best day when you're online from nine to five? And there's a couple things that I that I think stand out quickly is, number one, get your biggest task for the day done first. If you have a big video edit to do, if you have a big sales proposal to do, if you have a giant revision call, get it done first in the day because that's gonna build momentum for the rest of your day. So I've got that task done, I crushed it at 9, 10 a.m., boom, move on to the next task. Then I break it down into short-term tasks versus long-term tasks. So I've got a short-term list, which is stuff I can do today or this week. And then I have long-term tasks that I know are going to take more like focus blocks and longer time to do. Maybe I need to make a new instruction manual, or maybe I need to make a new After Effects template for a big project we're working on. And those are things that might take a week or two to kind of formulate. I got to talk to other people on them. So I would say those are like the three quick things I do to kind of structure the days. Like, What's my biggest task for the day? Get it done first to build momentum. I have a short-term list of things I need to do that can be done daily or during that week. And then I have a long-term list of bigger projects that I'm working on for the company. And if I can do those and say, okay, I, I accomplished two big goals this month on the long-term list, boom, that's a win. And then just shifting the priority of what needs to get done. Yeah, so you see the you see the day-to-day -day right now with what you're talking about. But I think one thing that you're the king of is Coming very close to finding the perfect balance between running a business and really m making a good amount of money, being comfortable, and also enjoying everything that you do, which is where the cool things come into play. The NFL stuff, the PGA things, the cool gigs where those are the ones that just, that's coming back to the beginning of this conversation. Those are the surreal moments when you're like, wait, 
I get to go every week and shoot for the Bears. This is my hometown team. Like, that's a crazy feeling. But how do you make sure to balance that and not go too far to one end or the other end? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it depends on, like, your goals and priorities as a creator and especially as an entrepreneur, right? Like, I'm a creative at heart. That's what I love doing. That's why I picked up a camera when I was in seventh and eighth grade. But my long-term goals are to build a business, inspire people, change lives. And I think even in the short amount of time that Indoor Drone Tours has been a company the last two years, being able to hire employees, give them advice, see their lives change, see their personal relationships change and, like, build into people – like I love that as a person more than anything, no matter what video I create. So like to sit here and have conversations and like, look at how our personal relationship has grown together since working together the last four years and then look at, you know, full-time employees at indoor drone tours. I think that's the biggest thing. So I think those surreal moments, like it comes down to like, what are your priorities in life and not leaning one way or the other. And there may be people out there who say, you know what, my dream is to be the full-time video guy for an NFL team. And if that's it, go after it and chase it. And I know I love sports, which is why I like to do it through the agency at times. But I think the end goal is like to build a great life, to have a great family, to inspire people. And by building a business, I can get to a lot of those things on my own terms and and controlling it, my own destiny. So I, the entrepreneurial journey is like always up and down and crazy. Could have a good year, could have a bad year. Things can change in, in the snap of an instant, but I, I wouldn't trade it for anything, and I don't think I can go back to the corporate life yeah. ever. Yeah, the freedom. I don't know how you feel about the it. The freedom is a, it's it, crazy. It, it's a blessing and a curse at the same time because with me dropping out of school and finding success at an early age without having to get that corporate job, I can't even think about having yeah, to see the other report at 9 a.m. Now, I, I still do try and keep myself to working from roughly nine to five every day because it just keeps me sane and I want to make sure I'm working enough even though I don't have somebody breathing down my neck. But whenever it comes to the balance thing, that's the that's the part of being an entrepreneur that I know I struggle with because we are working on weekends. We are working events that are happening whenever nobody else is working. Like I had a conversation with somebody that was working on New Year's Eve and we all could go out and work on New Year's Eve if we wanted to as photographers. You can go shoot at a club. There's so many things going on, the biggest events of the year. But one thing that I always try and remind myself of, and I think you'll like this, is my dad always looks at it as buckets. And he has a couple different buckets. They are, you got the family bucket, work, fitness, and religion or spiritual and you know it's impossible to get the perfect amount in all of those but whenever you have that mindset you can if you're feeling like crap one day you it gives you something to reflect on it gives you a way to sit back and be like wait I haven't went to the gym in three weeks I'm out I'm out of line and so that's something that helps me with actually balancing my life because it it does get tough but one of the questions I Um, that's awesome. I love yeah. the I love the analogy with the buckets and something I wanted to touch on with that is like from a freelance perspective, right? Like you've built an amazing freelance career as Joey. Like you're in demand. You're shooting big events from music festivals to NFL to sports. Like you've been at some monumental events in 2022 that I think younger Joey could have only dreamt of filming. Going to the schedule and the freelancing side of things, how do you keep that discipline, right? There's a balance between working all the time and burning out, but how do you give structure to your day as like a solo entrepreneur right now who's finding that next level and has a ton of work and has a ton of demand in creative right now how do you deal with discipline like staying online nine to five or structuring your work days yeah it's definitely not easy because you know you might be working late and then you feel like you can just sleep in the next day but i try and keep myself from doing that because i want to stay in some kind of rhythm but i would say when when it comes to staying disciplined it's just taken every day one day at a time and i'm not a planner uh, you know that about me i just that's just not how i'd I say work. you kind of are in a way i am but you're I'm organized not. you're organized and for one sure. of the biggest things for discipline that i have found is making sure that you're always working towards something else it and I'm not even talking about work. Something that's helped for me is working towards something that doesn't really have a monetary benefit on the other side. So I ran a marathon this year. So outside of work, I knew I had to do something else every single day. So it become, it's like having a hobby outside of work. You don't want 
work to totally contain you. And that's something that that's the YouTube channel right now because I'm not making money off it, but I know every day if the clients are calling that day, I know what I'm going to do. And I always have something to fall back on that, okay, I am feeling like crap today, but I know what I'm working towards. So I'm going to do that today. I think having goals like that is really huge, both inside work and outside work, like you mentioned and having like passion projects too, right? Like we could get into spec ads and all that good stuff (laughs) later on. But at the end of the day, like having passion projects and other hobbies and things that excite you and get you pumped up, whether it's hiking, biking, running, like whatever it is, it's good to have an outlet for sure. Yeah. It's nice to just have something outside of work because I think as entrepreneurs, we get so contained and I would say actually more so as creatives, We get so embedded in our work because at the same time as it is my job, I create things that I genuinely love a lot of the time. I'll work a 10-hour day shooting the NFL games, and then I want to come home and look at them, and I'm sending them to you right away. I'm sending my favorite shots because I'm so excited. (laughs) It is a long day, but you have to find the balance of it because even though you love it so much, if you really wring yourself dry with your creativity, it's going to be a lot harder. And I think that's something that I struggle with a lot because liking my job doesn't always go hand in hand with uh, making sure I don't overwork myself because a lot of, if I'm shooting a festival and I really am enjoying it, once I come home from really enjoying it, come home from that, I am just dead. I'm <laughs> and it's exhausting. And even if you love it, like it, it means you can still get burnt out in a way. And I think that's something you and I deal with probably a lot, as well as a lot of other creators, is like the whole burnout thing mm. is even if you love what you're doing, you still need to set boundaries because physically, emotionally, mentally, creatively, you're going to hit a wall at some point. And that's what I deal with. It's like, I love indoor drone tours. I love shooting sports. I love creating content, but there comes a time when I'm like, Oh my gosh, like I've worked 14 days straight. Like I have not stopped creating or doing things. Like I need to make time for my family, my relationships, all that kind of things. So there's, there's definitely a balance to it for sure. But at the end of the day, it's like you you do what you love kind of thing. And I rather put those limits on myself than have to go find them. Yeah, exactly. And whenever you, are bogged down that's why you have other people around you to you know you text them and then you have a conversation about how you're struggling and that you know you can all bring each other back up at the same time build build up with with your tight circle around you yeah but rewinding a little bit just into your life i'm curious about what from from day one of picking up a camera what whenever you picked up the camera said that you wanted to actually make a career out of it what what was the goal that you had that one thing that i know mine was i want to go on tour and i haven't done it yet but even though i haven't shot a ton of music and even though i've had success there's still this thing about the back of my head that i'm like man i want to go on tour what was that thing at the beginning of your life of being a creative that you want to do (sighs) It sounds cliche, but it's essentially to like be doing what I'm doing now. Like yeah. I have the freedom to pick different events I shoot in a sense from the sports side of things and different opportunities there. So the sports was always like the dream of like, oh, I want to shoot the Super Bowl. I want to shoot PGA. I want to shoot NBA. I I probably love NBA the most out of any sport. I, mm-hmm. I love shooting the NFL, but from like a personal side, like basketball yeah. is definitely my favorite. Um, so I'd say that was it for sure. And then definitely like the entrepreneurial side of things was always a goal. Like my dad was an entrepreneur. He worked at a corporation, then branched off and started his own book of business and ran that for 20, 30 years until he retired. So I always like kind of had that vision from watching my dad in business of like, okay, like I'll go work corporate. I'll learn a lot of things. I'll build good relationships. I'll network with people. Then I'll build my own book of business. I didn't know what that book of business was going to be. Was I selling media ads? Was I shooting commercials for people? Was I freelancing? I had no clue. But that journey and path was always kind of the goal in a sense. And so right now with indoor drone tours, like I'm definitely on track for the goal and want to keep growing that as big as I can get it. And then, you know, I'll always have, 
the sports stuff in, in my back pocket and as a creative project and even indoor drone tours shoots a lot of different like brand videos and sports stuff. Now is like that company has grown the last two years. We do all the work with the Chicago bulls. We've done FPV with them, traditional drones. We've shot stuff for Lowe's. So indoor drone tours and like the brand sports business side is like definitely picking up steam in that. And so the goal eventually would be do the cinema drones and the big stuff, but the commercial real estate is such a great revenue driver for the company. And it's such a great product fit. Because there never was way, a way to tour an office before flying a tiny drone through it. You could take photos and videos, but that's something we learned kind of diving into the real estate industry. So, Is there anything that you look back on that you learned from your corporate job that still to this day you implement? Yeah. There, I mean, there's there's tons of stuff. I had two great local sales managers at, at Comcast, which is where I worked before. I worked at Comcast Spotlight, which was their digital advertising division. So I was selling like local TV as like the Bob Rormans of the world and car commercials you see on TV. I would walk in those businesses and I'd cold call on businesses and do that. So I learned a lot from a sales side and networking side. And like, um, I guess one that comes to mind right away is like using verbiage that the client uses. So if a client's talking to you and say you're pitching a video to them and they refer to their brand video as their their brand story. Well, when you're talking to Cindy, you should always refer to it as her brand story. You want to spit back the verbiage that the client's giving you because that creates familiarity with them and kind of puts it in their own words. So if she calls this her neighborhood instead of Lakeview, say, oh, your neighborhood or that thing. So like kind of like replicating or like mirroring what they say. And then, then if you say, oh, we're going to work on your brand video, she's like, oh, is that the same thing as my, my, yeah. the, my story project? You're like, oh, yeah, your story project. So that's like a little tip and trick. But there's tons of little sales things like that that I still use to this day. And I think Zach would say the same. Like, we don't get to where we are now in our young careers without working those sales jobs for two years at corporate right. because we saw that side of it, too. Yeah, the it's funny whenever I'll send my brother occasionally a TikTok that's like a sales tip or something along those lines. And his response will be, yeah, this is what I learned in business school. <laughs> He's like, I already, I already knew this joke. Go away. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like people hate on it all, all they want, but there are people regurgitating it on social media yeah. now. And everyone's just copy paste, copy paste. It's the craziest thing in the world. Someone's going to see something you say on this podcast and be like, so like I said, when I learned it from Joe yeah. and then just repeat the same thing. Yeah, but thing. it's funny to see, you know, not that you hate on your corporate job, but wanting to get out of there and that, but still taking little lessons and what you said about remembering the verbiage that they use, it's almost one step on top of remembering somebody's name. We all know how exactly. important it is. If you meet somebody, you want to know their name the next time you see them mm -hmm. because just you think about it with yourself. If I meet somebody that I look up to or I am really happy to meet, if they remember my name the next time, it's the cherry on top yeah. and it makes me feel great. Exactly. I actually, this is funny, but I started doing this the past year. I keep a notes tab in my phone that is called people to know. And it's literally people I meet at like sporting events, people I meet at a restaurant, waiters I meet at restaurants, people at the coffee shop, like door guys at buildings of my friends and stuff. And it's like Jared door guy at 80 Wacker or whatever it is. And so like, I'm like, Oh, I've seen this guy. I know his name. I'll, yeah. I'll load up the notes so I can use the name on it.